Well, welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to another power-packed, anointed episode of the Ignited Metric series. I want to share a word that I pray stirs a fire in your spirit, and I'm going to share insight from Smith Wigglesworth, where we're going to talk about getting in the secret place until the word burns in your spirit like a fire, stirs in you such a faith that causes a confession that's a declaration of who your God is, of who you are in Him, and your inheritance because of Him. And that this day becomes the day where everything changes. That this day becomes the day you build a memorial to, where you got, and the Lord God brought you out. If you're fighting against a sickness, a disease, if you're fighting against some lack or a need, that this would be the day of your breaking through. This day, everything would change because of the anointed one and his anointing. Oh, if you're ready, let's pray and let's press in and get ready to receive what God has for us. Amen. So Father, we just come to you and we open up ourselves wide to receive all that you have. I thank you for the anointing Holy Spirit. So fall, there is no distance in the Spirit. And I thank you, God, for a fresh anointing to pour out that we would receive the fresh oil of this hour. And I thank you that you would give us eyes to see, ears to hear. And so open the word like never before that it would burn in us like a fire. Father, that it would cause faith to arise. And that, Father, we would begin to declare over our lives every precious promise that you have for us with such an authority that it causes all hell to shake and it causes heaven to move. And I thank you, Father, in the name that is above all names, the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. We need to so hear what these great heroes of faith who went before us, how they pressed in. Because see, we live in a day where we have such a knowledge of all the Word, but sadly it's a knowledge about the Word, a knowledge about the promises. But in previous generations, they had to get into the secret place. They had to press in with such a holy desperation and go after God until they got a hold of Him and He poured into them. They had to lay a hold of this thing and walk it out. And they saw God move powerfully. And I believe that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That this day can be the day of your breaking through as well. If we stop settling for the knowledge about and begin to press into the knowledge of. Go to John chapter 19 verse 30. And it says, So when Jesus had received the sour wine, He said, Now, I want to stop here. What it did not say is he said, I am finished. And many of you are facing a battle that's too big and too great for you. And you've come to a place where you said, I'm finished. It is too much, God. I can't do it. God wants to get you to the place where this changes. And you say, it is finished. Listen, in that dark hour, where the devil stood with all his minions, all those demonic spirits, all gathered, gleeing, delighting, that they had so destroyed the body of Jesus that they had defeated what looked like Jesus. He's on the cross dying. And they said, we won! And when it's the darkest possible hour, Jesus turned around and said, not I am finished, but it is finished. Oh, if you get a hold of this. And... Bowing his head. He didn't say, give up a spirit, and then his head drops. He bowed his head first and gave up the spirit. He was fully in control. At the set point, he suddenly caused the devil to have a heart attack. And you need to do the same as well. you got to know who you are in Christ because you know who he is. You spent the time in the secret place of his presence. And you know him. And you know who you are in him. And you know your inheritance because of him. I am finished is not what he said. 
And it's time that we've stopped saying that over our lives and our circumstances, but rather it is finished. That powerful term means the victory is won. That powerful term means I have finished the course. The victory is secure. It is won. Every debt is paid. It is over. Whatever. Listen, if you're fighting in a battle against sickness and disease, people come and say, what sin did you do? It is finished. If I'm facing some kind of financial debt, listen, I may have blown it, screwed it, done all kinds of things. I get into the secret place and I humble myself and say, God, I repent. I blew it. And then I say, it is finished. I stop letting the devil hold me captive to my mistakes and to my failures. And I throw myself on the mercy of the cross and I say, it is finished. To many of us, walk held captive to what everything is telling us. And we then tell ourselves what the world says, what our flesh says, what our circumstances say. And we can only conclude, I'm finished. And it's time to start declaring to yourself, it is finished. It's time to start declaring to yourself the word, what the anointed one and his anointing declares in his word and who he is, who you are, and your inheritance because of him. Smith Wigglesworth said, I'm attained that with a constant filling, you will speak in tongues morning, noon, and night. As you live in the Spirit, when you walk down the steps of the house where you live, the devil will have to go before you. You will be more than a conqueror over the devil. It's time to change the way we walk. It's time to change. And it starts in the secret place. Holy Spirit, teach me. See, I can do all things through Christ. That is not a name. That is a title. It's a title of who Jesus is. He is Christ. He is the anointed one and his anointing. That's what it means. You've got to get that. So I can do all things through the anointed one and his anointing. Jesus came and walked on this earth and he said, the spirit of God has anointed me. And he has anointed me to preach this gospel. He didn't preach like anybody else. He preached it with such life and authority that all hell had to move. There was no sickness, no disease that could stand against him. See, if you're coming in your natural authority, the devil looks at you and says, who are you? But when you come in the power of the anointed one and his anointing, it changes everything. So begin to change how you walk. So to the spirit, morning, noon, and night. Start praying in the Spirit. Start worshiping in the Spirit. But I'm not like that. Change it. Start being like that. We're in a battle church. And we've got to walk this thing out. They did it and it worked. The early church did it and it worked. So let's start doing what the Word tells us to do. And build ourselves up. Get yourself strong spiritually. You'll begin to get an expansion on the inside of you of the vision of Jesus. And you need a bigger vision of Jesus than the vision you have of that sickness, the disease, lack of wants. Smith went on to say, I see everything of failure except that which is done in the spirit. But as you live in the spirit, you will move, act, eat, drink, and do everything to the glory of God. Our message is always this, be filled with the Spirit. Simple but profound. We need a, such a change in how we walk every single day instead of being held captive to the soul arena, to how we feel, how we think. I deal with so many people that are stuck in that soul arena and I've been there. I get it. But it's time to stop walking naturally and start to walk spiritually. And that happens as you abide in the secret place and you let the Holy Spirit give you a revelation of who Jesus is, who you are in Him, and who, what your inheritance is because of Him. You understand that it's Him, the Anointed One, His anointing in your life, changing you. It's that, listen, there is no condemnation for those who are what? In the Anointed One and His anointing. That anointing can change everything. It can break you from every oppression, depression, every sickness, disease, lack and want. That anointing. Do you remember the woman with the issue of blood? She grabs hold of the hem of the garden. Some, something went out from that garment into him. And Jesus says, I felt it. 
she didn't just get healed. Jesus said, be made whole. That unction, that anointing that was in Jesus, that went into the woman, made her whole. Get a hold of the hem of his garment and get a hold of that unction, that anointing, and let it flow in your body this day. Let it flow into your mind. Let it flow into your spirit until every part of your being is bathed in the fresh oil of the Spirit of the living God. Even right now. Some of you need to get some anointing going. Begin to anoint yourself. Smith went on to say, This is God's place for you, and it is far above the natural life as the heavens are above the earth. Yield yourselves for God to fill. Would you come right now and in the secret place of His presence? Would you repent of every single time that you said, I am finished? God, the devil, that giant is too big. I give up and repent. Would you get on the altar and would you surrender yourself right here, right now? Some of you have faced such giants. I know, I've been there. Just slayed a giant and I'm rejoicing. This message, I've had to live out. I get it. And it's that decision we make that we proactively get in the secret place of His presence because God, you are everything. Your breakthrough is not everything He is. Your spouse changing is not He is. Your need be met, it's Him. We've looked in the wrong places and gained validation from the wrong things. You get in the secret place, you get a hold of Him, and you let the unction flow from its, His garment, His authority into your life, and let Him change you from the inside out today. We need to hear His voice. I was talking to some people, and they said to me, where are you from? I said, Northern Ireland. And they said, you have no accent. And I said, no. And I want to share something about this. Because have you ever heard somebody that is trying to speak like an American? And they say, that sounds terrible. How do you learn to take up an accent? Well, most of us listen. And we come into the secret place and we listen to what God's saying. But I'm going to tell you something, there's another part to it. It's watching how they say it. Watching how they move their mouth. I first came, I remember trying to preach and people would say, stop me. Could you just pray for an anointing so that we could understand you? They thought I was preaching in tongues. I thought they were speaking in tongues. Neither one of us understood each other. So my wife had to take time and I said, God, teach me. And he said, watch, listen and watch. And I found it's the same thing in the secret place. If you want to sound and walk and talk like him, you watch him and you listen to him. You get close enough in the secret place that you can watch his mouth as he's speaking those precious promises. And you stop walking in a knowledge about them. Oh, so many of us are rich in a knowledge about, we can talk. All about, we can use sermons and how Jesus is the healer. It's a rich knowledge about, but we don't know him. We don't know he is the healer in us. Because when you know it, something breaks on the inside. The anointed one, his anointing is loosed in you to do what only he can do. And all of a sudden you get a righteous anger against that devil touching your loved one. Touching that person that the devil's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. Taking your finances. You get in the secret place and you come to that acceptable time and that moment and something comes out of your mouth. It is finished, God. I'm tired of the devil taking. You are the Lord, my God, my righteousness, my peace, my healer, my provider. And by your stripes, God, I am healed and made whole. Let that healing come from the north, the east, the south. Let it come, Lord God. My breakthrough come because of you, Jesus. It's because of you. Your mouth changes the way you speak. The devil looks. He's not sure whether it was Jesus spoke or you. Up until now, he's listened. He's laughed. He's, oh, that's just you speaking. All I got to do is throw up another symptom. You quit. But when you are baked, when you are made in the secret place, you're not confessing to try and make something. You're confessing what you fully believe in your heart. Because you believe in the heart and you confess to confirm what you truly believe.
Stay with me. Smith said, when one dares to trust God on his bare word, then peace flows freely. Wavering is past. There's nothing to be done. All is finished, and you enter into the possessions that cannot come in any other way. So keep the test before you and see the salvation of God. God wants you to get your eyes off of. Listen, what you're looking up, what you got your eyes fixed on doesn't change. Stop looking at your problems. Start looking at Jesus. Stop, oh, I don't feel anything. Look to Jesus. I want you to get so distracted, so consumed, so caught up in Him that you forgot how you felt. That you forgot about the sickness, the disease, the problem, and all you can think about is your Jesus. The woman with the issue of blood kept saying to herself, if I but touch the hem of his garment. I think there came a point. All she could think about was the hem of the garment. She didn't think about her sickness. How do I know? Because prior to that, when she thought about the sickness, she thought, I'm disqualified. I can't go in public. Because she couldn't. It was wrong. It was illegal. She couldn't do it. But she got so focused on the hem of the garment, she didn't see the people anymore. All she saw was the hem of the garment, and that's my point of contact. And some of you need a point of contact in the secret place of His presence. You need to grab a hold of Him. Get your eyes off of until what comes out of your heart is a declaration of what you were fully persuaded in Him that He has done for you. Jesus did not say, it will be finished. You know, the tense that he used there is that it was, it's our, it is finished in the past. It is still finished in the present and it will still be finished in the future in your life. It was finished in the past. It is still finished in the present and it will still be finished in the future. Because of him, he paid the price. He is finished. It is finished. In Romans 10, 10, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and the mouth, and with the mouth confession is made unto what? Salvation. That word has everything you need. You need healing, it's in there. You need to get saved, it's in there. You, if you're backslidden, your, your redemption's in there. If you are lacking, it's in this word, because Jesus paid a full price. And I believe that salvation, eternal salvation, is the most important thing. And if you have, don't know Jesus, right now is the time. Right now is the moment. Don't you put time off. Because listen, we are in the last days. Look around what's going on. May the Lord give you eyes to see, ears to hear. And may He so richly convict you that this conviction would so touch your heart that you would get a revelation of the depth of His mercy for you right now. That He paid a price for you. He was a victim for you that endured the most cruel, horrible injustice he was the perfect son of god and he went through it for you to bear what you couldn't carry to give you what you could not earn to make you righteous to make you whole make you pure to give you life would you choose in this day would you dare believe in your heart would you dare confess with your mouth that jesus is lord we've got to get on the altar if you're back soon, we've got to get on the altar and begin to cry out and repent before Him and let His mighty Holy Spirit, even right now, move on you. If you've been saying, I am finished, get on the altar right now. Begin to cry out before God and repent and get washed by the blood of Jesus until you hear that voice. It is finished. And you declare in your life, it is finished. I don't go by what I feel. I don't go whether I feel forgiven, whether I feel healed. I go because it is finished. And when Jesus said it on the cross, it is finished. It is finished in my life. It is still finished in my life. James 2 verse 17. Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. There's always a corresponding action. Faith will stir you to do something. Do it. God will tell you to sow something. Do something. You do it. There's a call to obedience. There's a call. If you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. I'll confess you before the angels. Go do it. You bear witness. There's some things God will begin to stir in your spirit, something to do. Do it. If you sow to the Spirit, you reap life. If you sow to your flesh, and that's where we've been. Our whole life has been held captive by what we feel, by what we think, and we've just sown to that. 
We've allowed that to dictate what that's captured our ears. And it said, dude, we've done it. Oh, have a pity party. We do it. And all we do is wreak death. Would you choose something different this day? Would you get in the secret place? And would you allow the Spirit of the living God, the anointed one His anointing, to so wash you, to so cleanse you, to so lift you, that this will be a new beginning to you? And that this day you would choose to sow to the Spirit of the living God. So, start by putting your whole life on the altar. I'll never walk that way. I'm not doing that again. But I, I, I'm not strong enough, God. I can do all things to the anointed one and his anointing. May that anointing fall on you. You need to spend time in the anointed word. And let it do in you what it can only do. It will begin to change you so much from the inside. It's one of the most important things you can do. So the word. Get in the secret place and spend quality time. Make it a discipline that every single day you get before him and you get in his word and you sow it in you. And you ask the Lord God to teach you, give you a revelation of who he is, who you are in him and your inheritance because of him. And you begin to declare it and preach it to yourself. Stop listening to what the world, the flesh, the devil, your circumstance, symptoms say, and begin to tell what your God says in his word. Smith said this. This is the next key. Nothing but love counts. So be full of this all-prevailing charity that knows not fear and is blind to everything but the object of its perfect choice, Christ and him alone. Get your eyes off of things. Get your eyes off the person who's hurt you. Get your eyes off your symptoms. Get your eyes, get your eyes on Jesus. Would you get your eyes on Jesus right now? And would you just begin to worship him? Would you begin to exalt him and lift him up? Jesus is Lord. We love you, Jesus. We just love you. We want to be like you. Father, we repent that we have walked. Father God, filled with hatred and bitterness and anger. Father, we responded wrongly towards others. Let us so walk in your love. Holy Spirit, do such a work in us. Pour that love abroad in our hearts until we are consumed, wrecked, changed by it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just ask for the cleansing. We ask for a washing. Jesus, we worship you. We love you, Jesus. Teach us how to love. Show us how to love. Show us till your love controls us, holds us, keeps us. I thank you, Jesus, for that mighty work because that love will guard your heart out of your heart flows the issues of life, the keys to your breakthrough. I want to tell you something. When you make a stand, the enemy comes with this counterattack, and it's usually a heart issue, and it's a challenge of your love walk. So you choose to love. You dig your heels in, in the secret place in the spirit of the living God. The anointed one and his anointing teach me to love. Because remember what Paul said, the love of who? The anointed one and his anointing controls me holds my life together. The anointed one and his anointing, his love controls me and holds me together. And I can do all things through the anointed one and his anointing. Would you just let that anointing fall on you? Would you receive it right now? Some of you need to just raise your hands and just receive it. Oh, but I feel like a fool. I'd rather be a fool for Christ's sake. Oh, there's that word again. For the anointed one and his anointing to allow him to do in my life what only he can do because he is Lord and I am not. You're not Lord of my life. He is. My emotions are not Lord. He is. The opinions of others are not. He is. That sickness is not. He is. Smith said this. The essence of divine life is in us by faith. He that believeth. It will come to pass. We become supernatural by the power of God. If you believe, the power of the enemy cannot stand, for God's word is against him. Jesus gives us his word to make faith effectual. Whatsoever ye desire, if you can believe in your heart, you begin to say, whatever you dare to say shall be done. He shall have whatsoever he saith after he believes in his heart. Dare to believe, and then dare to speak. For you shall have whatsoever you say, 
if you doubt not. All of a sudden, in the secret place of his presence, I hear him. I see him. That word is so living. I'm not walking in a knowledge about some promise. I'm walking in a knowledge about him. But there's such a pursuit. Oh, Father, that, that hunger so consume each person listening and watching that every fiber of their being would desire to be found in you, that they're going after you. God, all we want is you. And in that place, Father, we hear your word. We hear that word and it's so spoken so loudly inside of us. Our vision of you is so big in us that we're brought to that place, to that appointed time where all of a sudden something stirs in us and we know that we know that we know that we know. And out of our mouth comes a declaration, comes a proclamation that causes hell to shake and heaven to move. It is finished. This is the day and we speak into our bodies that healing. We declare that it is done, Lord God, because of you, Jesus. And we begin to worship. We stop thinking about the problem and all we can do is worship you because we know it's done because it's all by you. Our heart is fully settled on you. It is fully given to you. We stand abiding in you and in your love. And I thank you, Father, for that anointing right now to fall, that the atmosphere was so thick with your anointed presence. Father, let each person, there's no distance in the spirit, experience the anointing of your presence right here, right now dripping on them, filling them, marinating them until they're so radically changed that this will be such a moment. Every heart healed, every life restored. I thank you, every bondage broken because that anointing breaks the bondage. Let them be set free, Father, right here, right now, in that name that is above all names. Until, Father, there's a voice that begins to cry in them and then cry through them. Father, the purpose of heaven, so that we stop saying, I am finished, and we declare to the devil, it is finished. We declare to our circumstances, it is finished. The victory is won. The purpose of God is fulfilled. The word says, and they are Father, that we're to pray. Thy kingdom come, that will be done. You have a responsibility to get into the secret place and get a hold and let the Spirit of God so pour into you the perfect will of the Father, to impregnate you with that vision, to so fill you until there comes a point of overflow where your mouth can't help because you are so fully persuaded by faith because the atmosphere of heaven is so filled with faith, you can't help but believe. And as you see him, you know he's faithful. You get a revelation of who he is. You get a revelation of who you are in him and your inheritance because of him. And out of your mouth comes a declaration, a proclamation. You're not taking it anymore. You're not taking that sickness or disease anymore. No more comfort for the enemy. But this day, you begin to declare. You begin to speak with an authority. You begin to command that healing to come forth. You speak to that body. Come on, line up with the word. Line up that every symptom bow. You begin to lose words of life. You begin to take that sword, which is so a part of you. It's not a flimsy weapon in your hand, but it's still a part of you because the word is in you, flowing through you by the anointed one and his anointing. Amen. Let me finish with this. Obedience is to believe. Then on that fact that you dare believe, you act. Amen. The spirit of God so stir in you, give you such wisdom that you would know what to do. You would know how to do it. And you would begin to move forward boldly with the authority that comes as you submit to him in the secret place of his presence. No longer held captive to your circumstances, held captive to the symptoms, no longer held captive to what everything's saying, but to what he says. And you give more careful attention to what the word says and to that salvation. And may he give us such a rich revelation of the greatness of his salvation. I pray that this day there be a shout in you, that this day will be a day unlike any other day, the day of your breaking through, that you would mark your calendar and you begin to act and move forward. It's time to receive your breakthrough in Jesus, the anointed one and his anointing. Let him do what only he can do 
I just thank you, Father God, and I lay hands on each person. I pray that even right now, they would experience that touch, that breakthrough that comes because of Jesus, the anointed one and his anointing father and the name that is above all names, the name of Jesus. Do such a work and father, confirm it by your mighty hands as we just simply preach your word. And I thank you that you watch over your word to perform it in their lives. In the name above all names, the name of Jesus. Some of you, there's going to be some suddenly that comes in you. You're going to wake up and find breakthroughs. You're going to get answers from unexpected sources. Your breakthrough is on its way. Your healing is on its way. Would you just begin to worship? Would you get into that place? See, this is the golden place where you're sowing yourself to the Spirit as you worship, as you pray in the Spirit. Stay in that place. Would you just stay in that place? Stay in the place of sowing to the Spirit morning, noon, and night giving yourself to the Holy Spirit so that you're always in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing, and allow Him, the anointed one and His anointing, to do in your life what only He can do. Amen. Well, I thank you for watching, and I pray this message has blessed you. Would you please like, share, subscribe, and give your comments? Because as you do, you really help us with the algorithms at YouTube and Google, and it's time to press forward, and we need to get bigger. We need to ask God for more. And I ask that you would stand with me for more. More backsliders than ever before, God, to stand forward. Father God, we're pressing forward for something greater. This is the year. This is the time. And Father, we want more in that name that's above all names. And if you want to be an official prayer partner, you can stand as an unofficial thank you. If you want to be an official prayer partner, simply go to robertpares.org. You'll receive our email newsletter. Uh, that comes out at least twice a week. And if God puts in your heart to be a financial partner, we thank you because it does take finances. We need prayer first. And if God puts in your heart finances, thank you. We don't ask for finances. We just trust that God will put in the hearts of the right people. And we so bless you and thank you. For more information, to be a partner, simply go to robertpares.org and go to the partner page. Well, I just want to remind you as always and encourage you that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad because through and for him in his name, the anointed one in his anointing, the name of Jesus, the name that is above all names, all circumstances, symptoms, situations, whatever it may be. Amen and amen. Thank you.